So Lacey Green's done a, a follow-up to her red pill video, basically describing her experience and, and asking to hear anti-feminist experiences and, and how and why you got to that stage. But she raised some other stuff there I want to address first. I'll get to the get to the question in a minute. So Lacey, you talk about harassment. Now I would bet good money that the vast and overwhelming majority of the harassment that you've gotten from anti-feminists, anti-social justice people, is anonymous trolling. I, I would I would bet a good amount of money on that, that, that the vast and overwhelming majority of it is, is anonymous. Whereas I suspect that a lot of the harassment and negative reactions and so on you got when you made your Red Pill video from feminists and so on was from visible people with with faces you know faces names presences people you can point to and identify people like steve shives and and cat black and, and that you know they are free to operate and to be bigoted and nasty and harassing in a far more genuine way like you say not not just taking the piss and so on whereas i suspect the harassment you got from anti-social justice people was mostly probably anonymous trolls so you know we've seen this happen again and again and again with people like Anita Sarkeesian and so on crying wolf and then when you go and look into this supposed harassment that they've received you either don't find anything or you just find a legion of anonymous forgettable trolls that are either obviously insincere or have no posting history or, or so on and this is the kind of stuff that a lot of us shrug off all the time you know we 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 get it all the time um and it, it's meaningless anyone with a you know, reasonable amount of history on the internet knows that these threats etc are, are spurious so when you take them seriously it reads to us like you don't know what the hell you're doing online you have no nous to to tell the difference between a, a genuine threat and and trolling you don't seem to draw a distinction between anonymous hate comments and people like Shives and so on who are doing it publicly. So, and you have to acknowledge that there is that genuine harassment coming the other way. Sure, there's anonymous trolls as well, but there's people like Shives and Black and Christy Winters and so on that get away with doing it openly in a way that the people opposing them never would. Their bigotry is excusable because they're targeting people that apparently society deems that it's okay to harass and be a shit to and like you say you've seen people go after people's jobs and, and stuff like that so a lot of what you're seeing is a vitriolic counter reaction to that people do something that they consider to be completely innocent and suddenly they can find their their job or whatever and under threat so it's little wonder that there is a a strong counter reaction to that so i just wanted to cover that kind of first before I answer your question. My question for you all, um, Antis, you know, what have your interactions been like with feminists and feminism? Is there any sort of, you know, key moment that caused you to feel strongly against feminism? Okay, there's no real quick and easy answer to this and there's no singular incident for me, really. It's more of a long, slow build up of things. So I say it's not that easy to answer. In regards to interactions, I'm an atheist. I've spent a long time in my life arguing against religious people who take certain things as articles of faith and believe them for no good reason. Um, and it's frustrating when you're trying to argue with them or get them to think in an evidential way because you're trying to make them think in an evidential way and that's just not how they're wired for one for one reason or another or not how they've become to be rewired it's probably more accurate and I consistently find myself drawing the analogy between arguing with feminism and I draw it broader to be social justice because intersectionality has meant you have to deal with the whole edifice of bullshit at once unfortunately but I find the parallels to be absolutely striking um, in that they believe things for no good reason often in the face of the evidence or without evidence at all the science science behind it all uh, makes me think of the creation institute i mean 
base concepts like like patriarchy. Okay, there are patriarchal or perhaps better to say phallocentric societies in the Middle East and Africa and so on. But the the feminist theory of patriarchy is a conspiracy theory. You know, you say patriarchy, my brain turns it into invisible space lizards are, are running the world in a kind of David Ikean kind of fashion. It's it's a conspiratorial nonsense, uh, at least as it's presented in, in feminist theory. Objectification, similarly, is is nonsense. I mean, this is a video. It's not actually me. You're watching a video. A video is an object, if it's even that, because it exists in an informational space, you know? So the video isn't me. I'm me. You know, a, a picture of a, of a porn star isn't a person. It's an object. It's a picture of a person. It's not the person. Most people outside of sociopaths do not objectify people. That's that's not how it works. Most men are not attracted to objects. They're attracted to women or men or whatever else. Sheep. I, I don't know. You know. So that that whole idea is just is just nonsense. And these are kind of foundational concepts of feminism. I also find that it doesn't seem to have acknowledged that the world has moved on. It still like seems to want want to play the victim. And you talk about playing the victim. Fem feminism seems determined to lock itself into this kind of 1950s narrative of men control everything and whatever else. We have full equality in law, at least in the West. Possibly we don't. Possibly it's gone too far the other way. I mean, I can't I can't think of a right. That men have that women don't, save perhaps going around topless, and there's biological and sexual cue reasons for that. That's about all I can think of. But when I think about the other way, I can think of plenty of rights that women have that men don't. You know, so women don't get drafted. That's been much controversy about that, and hypocrisy in feminism. That's one of the other things that gets me is the sheer scale of hypocrisy that goes on. Um, you know, women are protected from having their genitals mutilated by law. Men aren't. You know, custody issues, uh, the Duluth model. There's all these kinds of things that are discriminatory against against men that do not get dealt with in, in the same way. And it's not just on on legal matters. I mean, I know feminists like to argue, well, we've got legal equality, but not social, not social equality. Well, I'd argue the same problem there. You know, I've got personal experience when I wanted to be a teacher's aide. Um, and I wanted to work in primary schools because well, years and years and years ago when I did work experience from my school, I helped out a primary school. And there's a massive lack of male role models in primary schools. And even at 15, 16, when I, when I was doing this, it was obvious that a ton of the little boys at, at that school were absolutely crying out for some kind of male role model, some, you know, some man they could, they could look up to. And... You know, they were responding to me, so I wanted to follow up on that and and help out in, in primary schools because um, I, I felt that would be something I could do. That would have been my track, maybe be a teacher's assistant, decide whether I really liked it, and then go into teaching and try and work in primary schools where there's a lack of lack of men working. But I was subjected to such intense and paranoid scrutiny because I was a man. You know, the idea was that because I wanted to work with kids, then there must be some kind of sexual motive some pedophilic motive or or something behind it and i was subjected to such intense scrutiny that it just pissed me off to the point where i i saw all these obstacles in the way of this this career that i was thinking of and decided no i wasn't going to do it it just was it wasn't worth the the harassment and the and the suspicion and the amount of scrutiny that you would be under for your entire life it would be one one slip up uh, of, of any kind and that that would be it you would you would be screwed for life um, just what 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 would be the point? So yeah, these are the kinds of things that I I see constantly. This this claim that things are unequal when well, from what I see, it's it's the other way. These insane theories about gender, about objectification, about patriarchy theory, um, all all of this, and the constant interference with art, which I'll get into when I give my reply to the second part of the question. It's a, it's just. It's this massive edifice of bullshit that is not remotely scientifically based, abuses the scientific method when it bothers to use it at all. Wrongful statistics promulgated, supposedly, I, I guess, because they feel that the ends justifies the means and so on. It's just rotten to the core. Um, and the other thing in my interactions with feminists that really sticks out to me is that they 
do not understand that they are now the establishment and that they wield the power, at least in in to a large extent in businesses and certainly massively in academia. They're trying to play the underdog when they're the ones wielding the bat. Okay, so on to the other half of the question. Okay, there is no singular moment I I can I can point to. Um that really twisted it all around for me. Rather, there is a, a series of things. So I'm not anti-social justice. I'm anti-social justice warrior. I broadly agree on a lot of the ideas that they have, that we need greater equality, um, better representation and so on. But I disagree in the extent and the tactics that they, that they choose to use. Most particularly, I object to the fact that rather than just create new things, they keep fucking with other people's shit. And this has repeatedly been the thing that pisses me off and turns me against it, that, that and the hypocrisy. I would have called myself a feminist up until around 2010 or so. That's when I started to notice that something was changing something was different and the kind of lunatic fringe of feminism was becoming the mainstream of feminism um so i I began to notice those kind of criticisms and so on being taken seriously uh these these bizarre feminist criticisms and i began to see them start to interfere with things and for me the first real big blow up of that was in the wake of the Tomb Raider re- reboot. So there was, I don't know if anyone remembers, but there was there was a scene in one of the trailers of, of the gameplay showing where Lara gets trapped and it's kind of Im- implied um, that she is about to get raped uh, or assault, sexually assaulted in some way. It's not what actually happens in the game, but that's what everyone was reacting to. Um, and in reaction to that if I'm getting my timeline right, I wrote an article called In Defense of Rape, which was about how anything should be fodder for for stories. Uh, the, the most horrendous, despicable, horrible acts and so on should be free to appear in fiction. Whether it's rape, whether it's torture, whether it's murder, whether it's pederasty, whatever the whatever the hell genocide it doesn't matter anything should be allowed in fiction we should be allowed to examine it um and that setting sort of gates up on that in terms of quality and so on were too subjective and and so on so i wrote this this article it was intended to be part of a series I mean, it's intended to be part of a series and and people blew up at it um in an absurd degree i was being called things like a rape apologist Um, I was even spuriously accused of uh, of rape or having assaulted someone and that that went away whether they mistook me for somebody else or what I don't know it was never true but yeah it's just people throwing mud there were there were petitions to try and get companies not to hire me anymore or or to fire me I was already working for myself so that wasn't a huge issue but the, the principle of the thing was terrible and all of this was was over me simply defending the right of creators to create freely and that's kind of the the main thing that's bugged me down 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 this whole line is this interference in people's creativity um the haranguing and mobbing of of people and there's been various incidents that have, that have brought that up but for me this is so important because um i work in role playing games um, and we suffered heavily in the 80s, right right through to the 90s, really, from the satanic panic and the vampire panic that, that followed that, you know, being accused of being Satanist or of the games causing people to suicide and so on. So I'm very sensitive to censorship of, of media, particularly the kind of things that, that I love and enjoy. Um, and that used to come from the authoritarian Christian right. They were the people who were the problem. They were the ones who wanted to censor and control everything. Now it's coming from the feminist slash social justice left, though I don't consider them to be left. So it's it's a bizarre turnaround. These kind of people who were even allies in the past against 
far right Christian censorship are now enemies who are trying to do many of exactly the same things that the Christian right used to do, yet claiming to be on the left. You know, so if, if I sit down to write a book or create a game, th there's a problem in that I, I know I am extremely likely to get a huge amount of harassment and opprobrium and insults and people trying to sabotage work that I do because of this crazy ideas that they have that because you like sexy drawings or you include dark material in your work that that somehow makes you a bad person or that you're perpetuating some kind of uh, oppression or whatever whereas if anyone's doing the oppressing it's them so yeah I keep seeing incidents like this like uh, the whole Steven Universe fandom blowing up against the the girl Zami who drew characters in a way they didn't like that they felt was anti-social justice the the constant interference in in media like i said rather than making their own things you know trying to force companies to fit the mold that they want which often leads to disaster as as it has in in marvel and, and so on i mean to take and the hypocrisy the hypocrisy is the other big thing and again there's no individual incident i can point at so i'll just point to the most recent one so there's going to be some women only showings of wonder woman um this doesn't in and of itself piss me off that much. It is hypocritical because they're putting it forward and saying, oh, we're doing this for feminist reasons. While at the same time, we're constantly being told that feminism is about equality. They're putting on an event that is specifically and explicitly <laughs> sexist. You know, that's, that's maddening, that hypocrisy. But what's been more maddening is people don't understand why anyone's upset. I'm not that upset. But I understand why people are upset, because this is hypocritical, because it's sexist, because you're claiming what you're doing is supposed to be against sexism. And you find all these people making all kinds of excuses. Oh, but in the past, women were, women were oppressed horribly. Surely you can put up with a little bit of exclusion now. Well, I didn't live in the past. We don't live in the past. You didn't experience the oppression that existed in the past either. I don't believe in original sin. I'm an atheist, so don't try and make up some secular original sin on top. And um, men, men's issues. Men are having serious problems and issues, but even trying to raise them gets censored, shut down, fire alarms pulled, protests, riots, practically. It, it's absurd. Even someone as, as, as sweet and inoffensive as Warren Farrell can't have a talk without it being disrupted and, and alarms pulled and people being abused and harassed on the way in. It's it's out of control. Feminism is no longer about equality. It's about control. It's about censorship. And those go against core values for me. I believe in equality. Feminism doesn't. I believe in free expression. Feminism doesn't. I'm anti-authoritarian. Feminism has become authoritarian. That's why I'm against it and, and social justice issues. Because these things happen from all ranks of social justice. You've got racial minorities insisting that you censor or change your art to conform with what they want. Fuck off and make your own stuff. All right. I used to be quite sensitive to this. I used to try and make an effort. You can't win. Nobody is ever satisfied. So you have to just try and satisfy yourself. So there's no single thing. There's this umbrella of, of bullshit that goes on, the, the hypocrisy, the censorship, the authoritarianism, the demands upon others, the parasitism, fuck off and make your own shit, stop bothering me, or all, all of this, um, and even actively working against men's issues, when if anything, if we're, if feminism's genuinely, genuinely egalitarian, it should be working together with it, so, I mean, I don't know what else to say, I'm too, too small a YouTuber to to be noticed, I guess, but worth a shot. Zang.